This is the Power Break Podcast, number 162, titled, A Time for a Mindset Reset. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobBrewBaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Did you notice I had like a puberty squeak right in the middle of that? That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was unaware I was beginning puberty again. Perhaps I'm going back. And JT has has retired, but his voice is going back to adolescence. Yeah, it was my uh, it was my soprano. <laughs> Yeah, as my as my grandmother would say, <laughs> you don't sing soprano. What are you doing? Oh, it's soprano, by the way. Oh man! So you're by all the dressed way, up, maybe, buddy. maybe. It, oh yeah, I, I decided to dress up for the podcast today, but we're not doing video except between the two of us, so we can see each other for the sake of recording at distance here. It is inspirational for me. I'm <laughs> I'm feeling more professional as we speak. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I was looking back on this. Uh, people have made fun for me of dressing up from time to time. I used to do my radio program when I was in Cincinnati uh, on my daily radio show, and I would always dress up, and people would say, what are you dressed up for? You're on radio. I said, well, I want to have the best face possible for radio. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Since you have a face, that was made for it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then uh, when even when I was in seminary, going back to when the days in seminary, I used to wear a coat and tie to class every day, and everybody said, what are you doing that for? I said, well, out of respect for my professors. That's pretty awesome, man. That's really good. And that has really gotten lost. I, man, I, you go to a Walmart or you go to a you know, Walmart well, neighborhood <laughs> market or something, man. And that's, man, that's all you see is people in their underwear. Literally, man, they're wearing PJ bottoms and flip flops and socks. And it's like, <laughs> dude, you can't, you don't even have enough respect for yourself to go out and look good. That's just, yeah. man, that's craziness. But yeah, you you look really good today, man. And it is. I've always believed, you know, I um, and this is a rabbit hole a little bit, but there was an FBI study about uh, there were many people who had murdered police officers that had had contact with other police officers earlier that day. And um, they asked specifically why they chose not to murder one officer and chose to murder the other one. And they actually said, I could tell by the way that they carried themselves, that they were professional, they looked sharp in their uniform, and they could take care of themselves. So wow. So there was a lot of, I used to tell people all the time, you know, there's a big trend in law enforcement now to go, you know, into these polo shirts and all this really kind of casual look for a police officer. I'll tell you right now, you are losing the overall appearance of authority by doing that. Um yeah, yeah, and you just and, don't uh, look sharp. Yeah. Shows res- shows res- shows respect for the office as well. Yeah, you know, correct. Dressed. To- yep. Yep. Uh, or remember back here we are dating ourselves. I don't know if you remember, but there was those old commercials that said if you look sharp, you'll be sharp, right? I do remember those. Yeah, but just barely. I think I was like two. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. All with right, you, JT. Man. Let's do our. Let's do our weekly uh, thank you for to all of our people that uh, listen to our podcast here, the Power Break Podcast. Thank you for listening, number one. Number two, thank you for telling others about the podcast. And also thank you for leaving a rating and or a review wherever you download the podcast. That really helps, and we appreciate it. Yeah, these spikes in numbers are just so awesome. I, uh, I cannot tell you how surprised I am by them, but I'm also just grateful, you know, that you and I getting together and talking about God and what God's done for us and what God can do for us through his word is just, it's a, number one, it's an honor for us to do it. But the fact that other people, you know, are, are interested in, in actually listening to it's pretty awesome, man. So good. Yeah. We have a good time doing it. As you can tell folks that uh, JT and I have had a longstanding relationship started out on the bike and we rode together and we, uh, talked about the scriptures together and we decided to open it up and just uh, record a little bit and we've become a little bit more uh i guess formatted but that's all right because we want to actually portray something we want to uh 
bring you something to take home with you as we come across every week on the Power Break podcast. But yep. that's how it started. And uh, by the way, I got a nice, a nice uh, uh, thank you note from the folks over at Strong by Design for so our time. I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those guys are something else. They're Coach awesome. Chris and yep. Mike, Mike, the good guys. Anyway, we are talking today about being envious of another person. Uh, have you ever been envious of another person, or if so, what? <laughs> what, what, what? What for? You know, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it's just a funny question. I, I, anybody who uh, had a who didn't come to Christ like right out of the box, I would say the answer to this is always yes, because isn't that what advertisement is? Trying to make you envious of other things. Um, And if it worked on you, then guess what? You were envious of somebody or something (laughs) else. That's just the way that advertisement works. You know, we have such a sin nature towards that. Um, But the answer to your question is absolutely. Have I ever been envious of other people? You know, um, since I've come to the Lord, since I've been blessed with, um, you know, just just getting in his word, you know, I came to understand that that was sin. And I came to understand that that's um, there's a couple of things that are going on there. A, that's you telling God that you're not happy with what you have. And B, um, Mm -hmm. that's um, that's you becoming covetous, which obviously, if you read scripture, um, you find out that that's that's one of the worst things that you could be is covetous. So, yeah, the answer to that is yes. And you could fill in the blank as far as where in my life that was. You know, it could have been, you know, when I was playing college football, somebody that was better than me. It could have been, you know, in, in my professional life, somebody was a better police officer or somebody was, um, you know, got a scholarship and I didn't. You know, like I said, you could just fill in the blank. But. You know, that's a rabbit hole that can absolutely result in you being a miserable human being. How about you, man? Well, I I got to tell you this because last Friday I was riding uh, with Brooke across the causeway and I brought it up to him and it just dawned on me. You know, all of us who ride bicycles uh, are are guilty of bike envy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and bike envy is this, folks. Uh, When you see a bunch of cyclists together that ride bikes, they usually... They, they notice what other people are riding. Many times, if a person rides up, be it male or female, they don't see the person. They see the bicycle. Oh, that's 100%. <laughs> and, I'll tell you, my, my, my son Christian is like that. Like somebody will go by us on the mountain and he'll be like, oh, did you see that guy's wheel set? And I'm like, dude, I didn't even know a guy went by. That's why. What was it? You're like, oh, that was Industry 9. It was a torture. It was a, yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, so it's bike envy. It's not necessarily, I always uh, say, you get over that bike envy. You're not wanting to take away from that person. You're just thinking, kind of dreaming of, I have that bike, you know. And I was, I was, I told our congregation uh, about when I was talking about this with the congregation that um, uh, I, for a long time I was, you know, kind of not envious, but I was uh, just noticed that my surgeon who did my knees, um, rides a really nice bike. It's a Canyon, you know, it's, it's one of those really deluxe models. Oh, and it yeah. also has, has, has some really nice wheels. And then it dawned on me as I was riding and I was, uh, I was, um, riding either next to him or sometimes, you know, we'll be around each other in the Peloton. And I'm thinking, Hmm, if I'm riding next to him and he's got a much better bike, that means I have to work harder to keep up. So actually, I should be thankful that I'm able to keep up. And so it's kind of a stroke for me to say, you know, I can keep up with him, even though his bike would make him go faster. Yeah, (laughs) that's definitely true. But, you know, something that's always been funny to me about the bike thing, and this is definitely a rabbit hole we're going into. But, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, my bike is lighter. My bike is this. My bike is that. You know, it's so much easier to lose 10 pounds off your body than it is 10 pounds off your bike. (laughs) So I used to always like laugh at that. I'd be like. And cheaper. uh, And a lot cheaper. (laughs) Yeah. I used to always be like, you know, and it's funny in mountain biking, having a heavier bike is not a bad thing. Um, especially for downhill, because downhill, man, it's like riding a tank down the hill as uh, opposed right. to, you know, yeah. something that deflects all yeah. over the place. So um, perspective is everything, isn't it? 
That's right. <laughs> well, today we're talking about uh, a time for a mindset reset, and so we're talking about envy, and envy is closely related to covetousness, which is sin. In Psalm 73, Asaph admits, he's the writer of Psalm 73, by the way, and he admits to being envious of the wicked, which is a he, it was change of mindset for him because... Um, well, he was talking about praising God at first, and then he, he went into this envious of the wicked, and he talked about that. It was a real indicator that he needed a mindset reset, as here's his words. He says, as for me, my feet almost stumbled. My, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Sadly, many people fall into that trap but never recognize the need for the help that God provides to get a mindset reset. Yeah, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Uh, folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, as always, I would tell you to get over there, check out the resources. At the very least, sign up. So every Monday, you got that blog. MailChimp sending it out like it's its job. Well, because it is. That's its right. Job. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's talk more about that time for a mindset reset because, man, we are all guilty of this. I mean, I think about throughout my life, you know, a lot of times when you look around, there's a lot of people that do some pretty awful things, but they're very prosperous. Um, you know, so it's really important for us to really have that mindset locked down and not become envious of what they have on this earth as opposed to what they don't have in the spiritual realms. And I know you're going to talk a lot more about that. Yeah. Well, just some highlights from the article that is found on my website, BobRubaker.com. The article, again, is titled A Time for a Mindset Reset. You ever noticed, uh, been envious of people who portray success but do not portray the fear of God and or respect for his word? It's easy to fall into the trap of the world where every decision is made about moving forward and advancing our personal prosperity. This is what happened to Asaph, describing in Psalm 73. Look closely at the paradigm shift from a focus upon God and his word and behalf of his people and his work on behalf of his people and the focus on the prosperity of the wicked. Here's what he says in Psalm 73, verses 1 through 12. Let me just read it because it really, really is the picture. He says, truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. That's the first mindset. And then he goes into this. But as for me, my feet almost had stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pangs until death. Their bodies are fat and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. And therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes swell out of their fatness, and their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice, and loftily they threaten oppression. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongues stretch the earth. Uh, therefore, his people turn back to them and they find no fault in them. Then it says, and they say, well, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the wicked, always at ease, and they increase in riches. Now, we go to that and say, well, that's a, that is a need for a mindset reset because Asaph was attracted to that. And he fell into that trap. Uh, and as he did, uh, he found the answer when he sought it out. It says in Psalm 73, verse 16 and 17, when I thought to understand all this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God and then I discerned therein. So please notice the importance of worship in the life of a believer. Yeah. Because sometimes during the week we hear these things, as you mentioned, about commercials and even the billboards and magazine ads and stuff. It's all to promote an envious uh, feeling toward what somebody else has and, and that your life would be fixed if you could just get that stuff. <laughs> yeah, what a joke. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, something to, kudos to the advertisement uh, people because – they have uh, they have convinced us through our those commercials that you know we need certain things in our life a asap it's got to happen it's really crazy yeah. and it's got to happen got to happen now yeah yeah uh, so in in the worship service of course there's an understanding of uh, of God Asap was caught up with envy of the wicked and consumed by their apparent free and prosperous lifestyle it became a weary wearisome task to them until he went into the sanctuary of God when we go to worship we get a fresh view of God's greatness, a fresh view of his word, which includes the plan that God has, that he uh, offer those who reject him and his word. And so no matter how prosperous their way may seem, it always will be the way that God says in his final say that he will take care of them. 
in verses 18 and tw- through 20 of Psalm 73, truly you set them in slippery places. You make them fall to ruin. And how are they destroyed in, in a moment, uh, swept away uh, utterly by terrors like a dream when one awakes. Oh, Lord, when you arouse yourself, you despise them as phantoms. And then uh, Asaph continued or his new or really his return to the biblical worldview and mindset as he says, with such fresh awareness of the destiny of the wicked, a revived awareness of self and a renewed awareness of God. Listen to the words that he concludes with. When my soul was embittered, when I, I was pricked in the heart, I was brutish and ignorant. I was like a beast toward you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will receive me to glory. And then these famous words, you've probably heard them, JT. Whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So awesome, yeah. Isn't that good? It's so good, yeah. yeah. And and that is just an indication that he had a mindset reset. It was that he had a... His, his mindset, his paradigm had shifted to the wicked, and then he said, whoa, that's no good. And, and what brought him out of that was going to God in worship, and yeah. he saw things differently from worshiping God. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's what we have in the time for a mindset reset. You'll find the blog at BobBrewBaker.com. Check it out today. So what else is going on, Bob? Anything new? Uh, you, I just thought maybe you were losing your voice again, JT. You were, did it squeak again? I did, I, yeah, I know. I don't know what's going on, man. You know what it is? It's that MCT oil, man. Once it gets like in the back of my throat, it's like I'm trying to get it out all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, what else is happening? This is something that you're always interested in, JT. The book of the week is The Battle for the Mind. I thought that would be appropriate as we talk about a mindset reset. Never heard that's of what it. I wrote never about. heard of that book. No. Yeah, he never never heard of it, right? Battle for the Mind. You'll find it at BobBrewBaker.com. It is actually a collection of many blogs on that subject that I uh, wrote about. And you'll find the book, as, as always, at BobRubaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links, the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, this summer has been a summer series through Psalms, which uh, I mentioned uh, Psalm 73, uh, just recently going through Psalm 73. But the fall, we return back to our normal series going through the book of Acts. And we'll pick it up with Acts chapter 18. And I believe when this... Uh, podcast is published that uh, we will be heading into that. Anyway, check out the books and everything else at BobRubaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Rubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, please feel free to email me at JT at BobRubaker.com and we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Yeah, Bob, there's like a certain like note that I keep hitting with my voice that keeps like breaking. I don't know what that is. I'm telling you, that's what I get for being healthy. MCT oil. Well, Killing me. It, either that or, or because you live in the mountains now, maybe I, maybe you're taking up yodeling on the side. Yodeling. <laughs> yeah, actually, that sounds just like See? it. See? Yeah, that there was it. it. Is. <laughs> Dude, you got it. Hold on, I got to go get my lumberjack hat on, and I'll be right back. Maybe a little flannel. I already got my boots. I'm in good shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you know. Uh, yes, folks, if, you, if you'd like to hear JT yodel some more, be sure to drop him a line at BobRubaker.com. Oh JT God. at BobRubaker.com. Oh, my gosh, I can't and request, wait. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody actually knows a yodeling song, I'd be impressed, let alone make a request. But anyway, you remember, you remember, you remember, uh, uh, Marcel would always yodel. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot. He was about our that. friend. Yeah. He was, he's our friend from Austria that used to live in our area for six months out of the year. And he was quite the cyclist, but he would go when he, when, when he would go, come to an intersection or if there was a car in the way or somebody getting ready to step in the street in front of him, instead of yelling at them or whistling, he would yodel. And of course, when he yodeled, everybody smiled. They thought it was really funny. He also, he also wore like leader hosen when he cycled. It was really funny. Yeah. I love that dude. Yeah. That's, that yeah, he, he was funny. Yeah. All right. We're going to move to question number one from a spiritual side of life. So how does this envious mindset get a hold on us? And what can we do to make sure it doesn't? Or if it does, what can we do to get rid of it? 
Well, it's interesting that when you talk about the envious mindset, it's very subtle. And remember in Genesis chapter 3, when it says the serpent was more crafty than any other or subtle than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God actually say you should not eat of the tree of the garden? Mm. It's interesting that uh, it's very subtle attacks. Peter says this about this, that we're to be sober minded and watchful because our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Uh, so this is very serious stuff that, you know, we may take, as you mentioned, we kind of take it kind of a half-heartedly and, and laugh at uh, the way that we fall into the trap of modern advertising. But one of the ways that, it, that it's designed to do is to stir up envy within us. So we're told right. in Ephesians chapter 6 to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces and evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, we're to take up the whole armor of God that may, we may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. So that means... We have to recognize, as JT was pointing out, that the advertisers pull us down with envy. And so we have to be ready to resist that. And how do we do that? Where do we go if we fall into that trap? We go right back to where Asaph said in Psalm 73, we go to the sanctuary of God so we can discern what we, can, what we need to and then come back with the fact, what else do we need besides God? Yeah. Okay, that's contentment. That's contentment. And that, those words, famous words again, I'll just read them again. Whom have I in heaven but you? But there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Yep. That's being content. It is. Yep. Uh, he says in, says in the book of Second Timothy that godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's a Christian song where one of the lines is, is one of the best lines I had ever heard. And it talks about how when you start to go into this cycle of being envious and covetous of other people, it happens slowly. It's little things that start to happen. Like, you know, very rarely mm -hmm. does a disciplined person all of a sudden just jump off the end of the dock. Usually it's a long walk to get to the end of that dock before they jump off. So it's kind of a slow fade. So you just got to really stay in that word and really be, um, well, you got to be conscious. You know, what? It, what is it that, um, that uh, you know, they always say about our enemy, Satan? You know, he crawls around like he creeps around like a lion, you know, trying to devour everything. Yeah. So you have to really stay on your game and you do that by the armor of God, which, which I know that you're going to talk a little bit about when we get to question number two, but you know, um, that's so important for us to realize these little things that we allow in our life can lead to something a little bit more. And then next thing you know, you're envying, you're coveting, you're starting to get self-centered. You're starting to become, something that you don't want to become. And it's super easy to do it. So easy. That's right. That's right. And we have to recognize that the, the desire of Satan is to bring us down. Yep. And so we have to keep that guard up all the time. And that's what this mindset reset is about. So when we fall into that trap, we go back to what Ace of data, go back to worshiping it. Make sure we're, we're, we're faithful in the worship of God, both uh, not just corporate worship, but that's important, and that is very important, the sanctuary of God. But it's also times we spend in God's Word together with our family and also God's Word together or God's Word individually when we're together with Him individually on a daily basis. Right. It's a little discipline, but it's, it does make a big difference. Oh, a huge difference. Absolutely. All right, so question number two from the mental aspect. How can we mentally get a handle on what's happening to us when we fall into that trap? How do we make sure that we, we recognize it and get a hold of it? I think it's really easy as we just look at Psalm 73, and I really encourage you to read that with this new light on it, where he starts out by saying, truly God is good to Israel to those who are ever pure in heart. Okay, now just that said, the things that are written aforetime, we're told in the book of Romans chapter 15, they're written for our learning and we through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 
And so when you read those accounts and those narratives in the Old Testament of how God was blessing Israel and how he's watching over them, protecting us, that is important because that teaches us what we have, that the same God is our God. Right. And he takes care of us. Um, and he says, and especially to those who are pure in heart. So God expects those who are walking with him to walk in the same light that he has given to us, that he, you know, he's given to his people. And so it's the pure in heart to those who are, you've been made pure, of course, by his grace, but also seek to walk in a pure way. But then he goes, but as for me, when something happened here, this was a paradigm shift. Instead of focusing on what God has done in Israel and to those particular, even in his own life, those who have a pure heart, he gets uh, envious of the arrogant and he notices the prosperity of the wicked. He focuses on what they have. And, and I know that the words here are probably not the most popular today, but it says their bodies are fat and sleek. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Okay. But I certainly get the point. Yeah. <laughs> But it, but it means that there's there's a demonstration of their prosperity. They, they would flaunt it, okay? Yep. And they're not in trouble as others are. Uh, he says in their pride, they, they wear, for, wear for a necklace. We see that all over all the celebrities, right? And they scoff and speak with malice. And they threaten with oppression. But especially the words they say, how can God know? Is there no knowledge of the, the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. They're always at ease and they increase in riches. And so when you look at that, uh, stop the music, and especially if you were saying, oh, I'd like to be that way. Right. Okay? Uh, th- we need to come to our senses. We need to mindset reset. And that's, of course, the good news when he goes, I know this is kind of repetition, but this is important stuff, folks, because we get into that trap. And we need to go back to the sanctuary of God, go back to God and his word, and, and say, you know, look what I do have. And by the way, also notice what God says about those who live this way. They won't be around long. That's right. And, you know, a lot of times we don't, we get so focused on this earthly surrounding um, that we really don't pay attention to the spiritual and what's to come and how important that is. You know, laying our treasure in heaven, not laying it here on earth. We get so into that. And especially as our culture becomes less and less Christian, um, you know, you you have a tendency to buy into that sometimes. Um, and I worry for my kids, you know, cause they'll get so into that. Um, because mm-hmm. that's what's going on with their friends. You know, it's about, Oh, he's got an iPhone 12. Oh, he only has an iPhone mini or, you know, just dumb stuff that you and I recognize is simply meaningless, but they're, they're more surrounded by it now than you and I were when we were kids be simply oh, yeah. because and, the and- Christian, life was more prevalent back then. I was raised Catholic. So, you know, it, it, while, you know, there was, um, uh, there was a lot of stuff that, um, that I kind of missed being Catholic and not reformed. It, th- there was certainly uh, a focus on God and Jesus, and there was a focus on, um, on living a more righteous life. So, um, man, yeah, now, gosh, they go to school and they're surrounded by their friends who most of them, don't believe in God. Their parents don't believe in God. And it's all about what you're getting right here, right now. That's right. And that's why it's important that you have taken up the, the cause of catechizing your children, mm-hmm. teaching them at home, right? No more, no more thing that's more important for sure. You're absolutely right. That's, that's right. Yep. All right. So uh, question number three, turning to the physical aspect of life. Let's talk about the benefits of having a coach by looking at the pitfalls of trying to coach yourself. (laughs) And I have fallen (laughs) into many of those because, you know, JT likes to be nice to JT sometimes when JT doesn't deserve it. (laughs) Did you, by by the way, did you ever have a coach? I mean, other than football and I mean, say, say in cycling, did you ever hire a coach? Um, I, I have hired, um, coaches. If, yeah, for cycling I did. Um, and that was mostly, um, for an evaluation process to kind of see where I was and, okay. and stuff like that. And, yeah. and, and it's funny, you know, right now I am in the process of getting a coach for Christian for some of the mountain biking stuff. Um, oh, yeah, that's so, cool. And I'm going to tag along with that because, uh, there are a lot of people here in the Hendersonville, Asheville area that, um, have been over to Europe and raced downhill races and done all kinds of really cool stuff. So you can find, oh, you wow. can find a lot of really talented coaches. So we're in the process of that, yeah. but 
Yeah. But a, a yeah, coach I mean, is going to push you in the right direction and make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. That's the most important thing for yeah. me. Yeah. Well, whenever we talk about self-coached athletes who are struggling with improving their performance, it comes down to one or more of the following issues. Number one, they struggle in fitting training into their busy schedule. Yep. And it's easier to, if you're coaching yourself, you make a good excuse where if you're coached by someone else, you have to hold yourself accountable to that person. Uh, secondly, they don't know what workouts to do, and often they, they just increase the volume. <laughs> so, and that's I don't know not what to do. So I, just, <laughs> yeah. I just go longer and harder. Okay. Uh, they usually get a balance of training and recovery wrong. You know, again, if you're coaching yourself, uh, you, you throw recovery and rest on the back burner, and it's not that important. Yep. And the next point is they, they don't know how to na- navigate injuries and avoid getting them in the first place, and then they miss the mark when fueling their workouts and events. Yep. Anything to add to that, JT? Well, you know, it's, it's funny. I actually watched a video. I'm, I'm guilty of the volume thing. What I'll do is I'll add too much to try to get to a goal too quick. And yeah. and I'd start to lose my recovery, and and then you know next thing you know I'm sore, and you're not going to be productive if you're sore all the time or trying to recover. Um, but I I actually was watching a video. There's a guy named Nico Mullaly, which has got to be one of the coolest names on the planet. Um, but he's a um, I I think he is the current reigning downhill USA cycling champion, um, and. He was talking about how he didn't really embrace the e-bike thing until he started to realize that even on the days where he could, where it called for him just to recover, he could, he could get a recovery ride in on an e-bike because he could get up to the top of the hill without killing himself and still be able to get a ride in and still recover um, and rely on the e-bike to do most of the work. Whereas, you know, if he, if he had to get the work in, he just turned, turned the E part of the e-bike off and got the work in. So he was Ooh. talking about the advantages of having an e-bike for an athlete, for someone who's really serious about their training, um, because you can get a nice recovery ride in. Um, now that may apply more to the downhill mountain biking thing, just simply because you can get a recovery spin in Florida and because most of it's flat, but down here, it's pretty hard to get a recovery spin in in, because you're either going up or down. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you also have the winds here in Florida because the wind is pretty strong. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Devastating. And just to add to that, a famous cyclist by the name of Greg Lamond, very famous, uh, who owns a bike bike manufacturing company now actually said if he had to do over again uh, in training for the tour de france he would use an e-bike at least two days a week maybe three wow Uh, there you go wow yeah yeah there there, there's a lot of stuff coming out like uh specialized they came out with a bike um that basically is their enduro uh bike um but it has it has a motor on it um, and basically it's for their athletes so they can get more reps in and they can get more training in. And the bike is very similar to the one they're going to be using in competition. So, um, and, yeah. And the nice thing about it, you can turn, dial it up. You can go full force with all, uh, E all with, all with electronics, um, uh, pushing it forward, or you can go and just, uh, increase your wattage. Yep. So that's right. Um, can make a big difference anyway but it takes discipline you know when we talk about coaching if you're going to be self-coached to follow some guidelines but also probably easier just to at least start out with a coach and get some some good uh, tips but it, either way it takes discipline but as we always mention discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life check out today's show notes at bobbrubaker.com click on the power break podcast today is show number 162 and submit your questions by email to jt at bobrubaker.com and Bob will get to answering it on an upcoming Power Break podcast because um, like I, I always give you the option of asking me but you know I would go with Bob especially today because he's dressed so nice better answer for sure <laughs> quick word for the battle for the mind it's a book that we're offering this week you'll find the details at bobrubaker.com click on the resources go down to the books scroll through the books you'll find it the battle for the mind at bobrubaker.com well thank you for joining us for the power break podcast please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast and check out notes news bob's weekly blog and other cool things at bobrubaker.com and listen next week for the power break podcast